Therefore, it is not enough to have a right. We must have correct judges to interpret the right. We must have correct kind of a government to implement the right. Therefore, all three must go together. Not enough to write good, good constitution. The constitution must be written into a reality. When it becomes reality, it should also be implemented at the ground level. It is not being implemented. That is the, that is the state of our that we came. If you see my book, there is one case on <coughs> Punayata. She was a pujari in a village temple. Her own brother said, you can't be a pujari, get out. The temple belongs to men. A woman can never be a pujari. I asked a simple question. If women can be worshipped in a female form, why she can't be a pujari? You are worshipping a goddess. Why she can't also do the prayer? I gave a relief. I said, there is no law in this country which prohibits women become pujaris and priests in a temple. Even in the Vedic days, there are women who have learned Vedas. They were experts in Vedas. Nobody can exclude this woman. And I wrote like that. And the government of Tamil Nadu implemented that order. There was a lot of resistance in the village. And there was a big police force that sent 150 policemen marched under the leadership of the Supanda Police Madurai. And the key was given to the women. That was the first victory. Because I said, it is the women who are holding the sky. The sky may fall. It is not the men who are holding it. It is also the women who hold it. Since they hold half the sky, they are intended to have treatment, equal treatment, and every sphere of life. There is no sphere they can be excluded. Now, this is something which we have to think, you all, and act. When you have a power of a judge, you will be able to write orders like that. Not to say you are polluters, you can't go. Article 15 3 says the women can go to any place of worship. Article 17 says she can't be prohibited. Untouchability is abolished in all forms. Not only untouchability of don't touch me now. All the pollution theory has been banned in this country, but still women are not allowed. Therefore, as a student of law, you should continue the experiment. It is not only 15. Today, if you see the fundamental duty, 15, 51A, E, sub, sub clause E, all deregulated practices against women must go. This is a fundamental duty of every citizen. It's written in the constitution. Nobody can defy it. And how do people say the women have no right? Now, in this book, you will see a story of an yeah, employee in the air, airport authority. She was born to a, a father who is a Gandhian. Her name is Kasturi. She used to wear Kadi Sari to the office. Suddenly, the airport authority said, You must come with a uniform. She said, All right, I'll come with a Kadi uniform. No, the uniform supplied by the management. It's in a chiffon sari, a Berlin sari, a synthetic silk sari. Then you must come. She said, My father was a Gandhian. I believe in Gandhian value. I will wear only Kadi, nothing else. She was given a charge sheet. She was suspended. The question came before me. I asked the question, Does it matter whether it's Kadi or Kadi? Is not Kadi used for a freedom movement? Is not people say, Wear Kadi and drive out British? Manchester cartons of crow buried in this country. People burn. All foreign goods are burned. You became Sudesi. If Sudesi becomes this country, if Kadar, Kadar becomes a part of a Sudesi movement, how is that the public sector managing director suspending an employee for coming with a Kadar sign? I wrote with my order, this is sartorial despotism, a just dictatorship. I also punished that managing director by imposing 5,000 rupees fine. Because here is a woman who stands to the freedom principle. Our fundamental duty says we shall cherish our freedom movement. Then one public sector manager and say, no, you come with your sign, then you tell me sorry. We were able to give relief. We were able to think of new ideas. An idea of a Sudesi movement. It is not Modi's understanding. Sudesi so idea was there even during British movement. The pre-independent movement was there. Now what do we find in Karnataka? Suddenly the education department comes and says, wear a uniform and come. All right, they come. Some girls were wearing kashi, a kashi. You call it hijab. Can't come inside. How? Under Article 21A, we have made education as a fundamental right. Any girl or a boy at the age of 4 to 14 have a fundamental right to have a compulsory free education, universal education. 
Now you tell them don't come inside because you are driving a hectic street. Now where do you go? It is their belief. It is their society which requires. If your fundamental right is to learn education, and the state must impart that education up to 14 years, how do you stop the girls? They are following each other. Cut out your children. No, no, no. Discipline. What discipline we are talking about? Are not the girls coming with their uniform prescribed? It may be their practice. It may be their society's practice. It may be some people may claim it's a religious practice. Our Constitution, Article 25, say everybody has a right to faith, a good conscience, a right to propagate. When you have such a right, how do you stop these girls? Now, Karnataka bill says no. You can't wear. Twenty thousand girls have been denied writing their tenth standard examination. What way? They were prepared for the examination. They were attended the school, but they were not allowed inside the exam hall only because they were wearing a kerchief. As a law student, we will have to discuss. It is not a matter to be led led with the judges. The society has to deal with it. Why not the girls should not come? In my school days, in my village, I know many boys who are not wearing the shirt. I know many boys who are wearing trousers which have so many holes. They come from a poor family. It was an inclusive society. Teachers went to every house. Please send your children. They must learn. They were all sent to agriculture work. They were all sent to uh, as a shepherd to take care of the cattle. But then the teachers went and brought them because this is an inclusive society. Today we find the society excludes in the name of religion, in the name of dress, in the name of food, in the name of anything you call one nation, one leader, and then one party only. This kind of fascism that can never happen. As a law student, when you read law, you must know the content of Article 14. What is right to equality? Is not this country declared as a secular socialist republic in a preamble? Keshav Anand Bharati says it is a preamble, it is a basic structure of the Constitution. When it is basic structure, when this country is a secular country and the secularism is defined not in the Constitution but in S.R. Bombay case, the man who came from Karnataka is the chief minister. His government was dismissed. The matter went to the Supreme Court. Nine judges heard the matter and wrote, Secularism means a state treats all religion equally. He shall not discriminate from one religion to another religion. Now what do we find? Karnataka becomes a laboratory for different experiments. You don't need halal. Then what? Need something given by you? What is wrong with halal? Then don't put loudspeaker in your mask. It is spoiling your ears. For 100 years you are hearing. 200 years you are hearing this noise. When people are invited to come for the prayer, it takes only for 2 3 minutes. Can't you tolerate? He is not tolerant, taught us in our schools and colleges. Now you say, no Asa, no Hilal, no Hijab. Where do we go? Is it not an inclusive society? Now this is where the religious test comes. And that too, the test is more on the women. Because it is a religion which oppresses them. It is a religion which divides them. It is a religion which puts on a greater load than men. Men can defy everything. Women cannot defy. You see Sabari Man. You see the Hajar case. Whether they like it or not in their preference. Why is that as students? Why is that as a conscious law student? We are not able to take it up. I remember in 1975, when emergency was declared in this country, we were taught in our college. I was a second year student. We were taught constitution. The teacher was teaching very beautifully, right of expression, right to assemble, right to union, right to move out territory. We found every leader in jail. Even Modi was in jail. Advani was in jail. Vajpayee was in jail. Every leader, left or right or center, they were put in jail. What reason? Nobody knows. They had detention without trial. A district magistrate can say, I am satisfied, you should be kept inside. They were out there for 21 months in jail. In fact, Yannou Prasad Yadav was a student leader. He was in Visa. During Visa time, he already got married. He had a daughter. Today, his daughter is called Visa Bharati. It was a notorious detention order when two lakh people were detained in this country without trial. What did the Supreme Court do? We can't hear this matter. Your fundamental rights are suspended. Is it so easy to say? We ask our school teacher, we ask our college teacher, you are teaching beautifully, right of expression. Where is the expression? You can go and shout outside, I'll be arrested. Then the teacher said to go outside.
That is not the issue. Today, law student, you have to learn law. You have to learn the correct law. You have to not only learn law just for a degree, but to practice that law in public. That is how you see the Jai people. A woman who is from Adivasi tribe, who doesn't know anything to write or read, she puts her come to pressure. When she comes to court, she has no lawyer to defend. He just took up her cause and finally you have succeeded. Her daughter became an educated person who reads the newspaper. You have seen the film, I am not doing the film. But it was a law. It was a law which helped her to redeem at least part of her denied justice. She belonged to a criminal crime. And therefore she had all time criminal. And police doesn't spare them. Now you need a legal system which can redeem their rights. When you talk about law, the law must go to the needs of the poor, needs of the underdog, needs of the underprivileged. Needs of the underprivileged is a must talk. Don't think that we can go for corporate lawyering or some other law house where we can have an air condition advice given to some big people. It is the ordinary people who are aging out to small living, who are sent out of their own place of work. The moment they say encroachment, go out. It has happened in Korar several times. A company which has been running, completely closed, people are asked for jobs. What do you do with them? Therefore, there is more understanding, more determination is required. I am appealing to law students. Even when I used to say to lawyers that it is not a sick pack body, it is our six and a half ounce brain that has to be kept sharp, that makes everybody afraid. What is that accumulation we have? We have a legal argument. What is that we have in support? What is that armory that we are carrying? We are a constitution. That little man carrying a little book and telling you are wrong, you are wrong all the time. That determination we should come. It is not mere theory. Your theory will be put into practice. Many people ask, is law a solution for our problem? It may not be a complete solution. It cannot be an absolute solution. But it can be a first aid. You would have written papers in most of the road accident. The first aid is given. 80% of the people will be saved. So law is only a first aid. You can think that way. He said, somebody asked me in the train, why is that lawyers are charging so much money? I said, there may be some lawyers. There are even now, there are good lawyers. You can approach them. There are legal aid poor. Article 39 a talks about legal aid to poor. Therefore, you have a bounded duty to know the instrument of law that you have learned, the skills that you have developed to use in favor of the poor. And the entire book described 15 incidents of women who came to court. All those women are not educated except one or two. But they did knock at the door and they got relief. That is most important. By reading all this you may not get a great uh, enthusiasm. But you will know even a poor woman, even a woman who doesn't know her right, she is able to get some relief in court. She has a right under law. She has a constitutional right to establish before a constitutional court. And therefore, the attempt to tell you, circulate these books, is only to make you more enthusiastic about your own profession. Don't ever think this profession is nothing. We have a 10 year incubation period and we have so many hard work to do. So it's very, very little income. That is not the issue. The issue is more important that today, when you have a skill, when you have a knowledge, and when you have a duty imposed on you by the advocate side, you must appear for the poor, needy, and the deprived woman and win them their right. That is where law students' motto is there. We don't have a vote like the Hippocratic vote, but we have a greater vote like the Constitution, which redeems the poor, which redeems the women, which redeems the minorities against the great power of the state. And therefore, I am not telling that you should read my book. If there is any opportunity, please read the book. There are more other books around the market. You should understand it is not the syllabus. Beyond the syllabus, we have many things to learn, and that only makes you a bigger lawyer. People call me Jai Bhim lawyer, I am only Chandru. It is after the movie that prefix has come. You must know the impact of real, the impact of film. Before the film, I was also not known here. You would not have assembled here. But the film creates a greater impact. That is only a very small case. 30 years before, in 1993, I did a case for Adi human. Got them some relief. But you have done more other cases. Mahatma has appeared in hundreds of cases. Hundreds of human rights cases have appeared. Each, each can be a story, but each is not shown in the film. Each is not shown in the screen. But beyond that, you have a capacity to learn. 
today we have an information revolution. We are touch our button, we can get every information. We will be able to read beyond JB. It's only a film. But it is not a real, it's a real that matters. Now the question comes, alright. Now, what do you learn from this film? You learn from the film two things. This I conclude is what a woman who does only puts a thumb impression in a court paper, her daughter reads a paper, a newspaper in a lawyer's office, putting her leg on the other leg, and then believes Ali shows the way. This is what Dr. Ambedkar said educate, learn, educate, and educate. These three slogans can bring them more relief than your court orders. There is also another message in this film. I used to ask many people that girl character is a second. She was acted by a Malayalam actress, Vijayamal Jos. She was given awards in several awards. One such award function, they called me. They said, you must give the award. I was very happy that this girl, very young person, did a very good uh, acting. Therefore, I gave the award. Then the organizer said, you are given two minutes to speak. You can say in two minutes whatever you want. I could not think in two minutes because lawyers were taking to speak for a long time. Because you are only put a meter. The more bigger, the longer the meter, your piece is more. In two minutes, I was wondering what can be said. I immediately thought, this Vijay Monjos, who acted as Sengeni, if she comes to your house, you will open the front door, put a sofa, ask her whether she wants cool drink or coffee, then you will have a chat with her and send her with all the gifts that is possible to give to you. The real Sengeni comes to your house, will you allow her from the front door, or at least from the rear door with your house? There is a gap between real and real. Unless that gap is removed, there is no social justice in this country. Thank you.